People who study insects have been all abuzz lately following a most unlikely discovery and the amateur entomologist who made it. A four-year-old girl with a knack for nature found two colonies of rare stingless bees, creatures that scientists thought were long gone and that no adult had managed to notice. Annika Arnott's command of nature is confounding to many adults, thanks in large part to biologist Tarj Lindsay. Do you know that um, that um, the carpenter bee can can eat um, um, lavender? He's her caregiver, brought in by her parents when she was three months old, so Annika could explore nature in her Palo Alto neighborhood. They don't look like a bumblebee, which is big. But this year, four-year-old Annika, by now a seasoned naturalist, here found tiny bugs that weren't just your average insects. Her discovery found its way to California's Department of Food and Agriculture Plant Pest Diagnostics Branch, where Dr. Martin Hauser is senior insect biosystematist. And you're surrounded by two million, about two million dead bugs here. The bugs Annika found are stingless bees, which aren't supposed to be here. They live in Brazil. Shows you how small it's they are. So small. They are very small, and that's a honeybee for a comparison. Annika took us to the undisclosed location under the condition we wouldn't divulge this special tree in her special place. In this spot right here, when you came up here, how many were there? A ton? And how did stingless bees get here in the first place? Decades ago, the U.S. Department of Agriculture was looking for bees to boost the size of fruit and vegetable crops. In 1950, the USDA asked a Brazilian researcher to send them bee colonies to see, to have alternative pollinators. Wow. He sent to Gainesville, Florida, uh, Logan, Utah, Davis, and Palo Alto. And he said all the bees died in one year. They, they didn't like the cold weather in Utah. They, they couldn't compete in Florida. They also went to Stanford professor George Schaefer. Only the colonies he sent to uh, Dr. Schaefer uh, survived in Palo Alto for eight years. But then... He but we're like 70 years later now. <laughs> I know. It's For 70 years, these bees are flying around in Palo Alto and nobody noticed. And a four-year-old girl noticed yeah. them this year. It shows us when you when you have a new perspective with the eyes of a child. She, she just looked at that and, and she says, like there's something different with these bees. The stingless bees Annika found were certainly descendants of ones that had been brought in as USDA pollinators. They were presumed dead and had no representatives in Dr. Hauser's vast collection. In fact, Dr. Hauser hadn't heard of stingless bees from Brazil until nearly 20 years ago. Now I got a submission from a um, pest control uh, guy in Palo Alto, and first I thought he was uh, <laughs> pulling a practical joke on me because <laughs> it was a stingless bee. It's like if somebody says they have a kangaroo in their backyard. The guy was Richard Schmidt, asked by a Palo Alto homeowner to get rid of buzzing bugs in her backyard. No, I didn't kill them. Call him an exterminator with a heart of gold. I hadn't seen them before. Captured a couple of them, sent them to our county ag department. They didn't know what they were, and so they sent it to the state. I sent uh, these bees out nearly all over the world to other experts, and they were all puzzling. They all said, where did you find it? And I said, Palo Alto. And they kind of like, mm, mm, no, that's you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, finally, um, he come up that it's a, a species uh, described in the year 1900 by, by a German bee researcher. After he cracked the case, the tree toppled and the bees disappeared. This is a part of the bee nest here. These, a single uh, remaining piece made it into his collection. And you see there's still some of the honey there. And That's all he had to go on it, until it this year, when like Annika's bees bee, became, became social media stars on iNaturalist, a website that posted pictures Tarj took. I was very impressed that she found two colonies. That's very amazing that she found two and all the scientists uh, found none. <laughs> so We need more children looking I'm, for bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy uh, when, when uh, kids go outside and explore nature. That's, this is how I started. For Dr. Hauser, as much as the bees are a rare find, Annika is too, and it was important to meet her. My name's Martin. And I'm very proud of you that you discovered this piece. And with that came the biggest bug book he could find. 
to Annika for many more discoveries to come. Actually, her bees aren't in the book. Even after more than 100 years of chance sightings, the bees still don't have a name. Though it's been suggested the stingless bees from Brazil be named Annika bees. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, really I mean, it, it, it's truly <laughs> her eyes finding them. You have the exterminator who didn't get rid of them at the time that he could have. And we still need a name now for these bees. I think we prefer stingless bees to sting, stinger <laughs> right. bees. And they're very right? different. It's hard to tell in that. But I'm telling you, they were so tiny mm -hmm. that she yeah. saw them and knew right away that this was a bee. New. Just new. It's crazy. Brilliant. Little buggers. <laughs> but I'm <-bum. laughs>